Hi, I'm Scientific Illustrator Stephanie Raza. Welcome to Nature Sketch Group's Got and Sketch a Seaside Daisy instructional video. In this video, I'll be showing you how to sketch the Seaside Daisy by applying what you learned in your step-by-step -step lesson. You can follow along with this video even if you don't have a lesson kit. You can help this tiny business by clicking that like button, subscribing to this YouTube channel, and shopping for future lesson crates at naturesketchcrate.com. First, make sure you have all the materials you need before you go out to sketch. Head out to sketch a seaside daisy or something similar at a garden, park, or even at your home. Today, I'm sketching a seaside daisy that I picked for my backyard. Remember, this is just a sketch. Take your time, relax, enjoy observing nature and painting, and don't get too caught up with accuracy. Let's get started. So first you want to figure out how you want the plant on your page. So the composition and what parts of the plant you want to include. I'm going to include things that are similar to our step-by-step -step image. This particular flower head doesn't have as many disc florets. It has a lot more disc floret buds, but I like the number of the petals or the ray florets and I think it's pretty similar in shape. It also has this little bud here that's already on the stem in a very similar way to our step-by-step -step, giving it a similar composition so the way it appears on the page so I like that a lot. Conversely I have picked a couple other flowers from the plant to show you. This one has a lot of big disc florets here, another bud, and some flowering buds they are just starting out. And this flower head here has lots and lots of disc florets. It looks like all of the buds have opened up. Looks like I got a little aphid on there. Gently pick it up and put it over back on the flower. So now I have to think about how I want this arranged on the page. I think I'm gonna want this flower to kind of stick out like just like in our step by step and then just have the bud kind of sitting to the side here like that and I'm going to use my kneaded eraser to help prop it up. It might take a little bit of work to get that to work for you. All right, I finally got that to work. It took a lot of maneuvering to try to get that flower to look similar to our step-by-step -step reference image flower. So this is just one way you can do this. Um, since I have the clipping of this plant, I have arranged it on my page and then I'm going to trace around having it on my paper. And I'm gonna note that the tracing is probably gonna be a little bit larger than the plant itself. Another thing you could do is if you're outside and you haven't clipped the flower from the plant, you can just stick a piece of paper, your watercolor paper right behind it and then kind of trace the same way I'm going to do right now. The last thing that you could do is you could just look at the plant and draw it. Although it does take a little bit more time to do that because you have to guess about the size a little bit. This takes away the time it would take you to have to worry about the position and size, getting it right on the paper. You would start with some simple lines and shapes, just like you did right now. So I'm basically drawing some simple lines and shapes, some ovals, lines, and those are just like the outlines. But that's the same thing I would do if I didn't actually have it on my page. 
drawing these lines, ovals, and outlines. Um, you can make any marks that you need to to help you make this go a little faster and easier. It's good to learn to sketch fast. I'm just trying to get an idea of this plant, not just an, not an exact representation of it. This is a clipping of the plant and it's already starting to wilt. The leaves are wilting a little bit and that's something that I can note on this white area on the outside. You can use the white area to note anything that you like about this plant. This is your journal and your sketch. I think that's the basic outline of this plant. I'm going to gently move it over. Try to keep it in the same position, but the view and my drawing will probably change a little bit as I create this painting, this sketch. And that's fine. It's just a representation. It's not meant to be exact. So I'm starting with the center of the flower with the uh, florets, the disc florets, the buds, and the bloomed florets. And I'm just trying to figure out the shape, get that right. And I'm going to pick a center. And then I'm not blowing this up at all, so I can't really see those little buds. I can see some of the shape of the buds, but not a lot. So I'm just going to kind of go around, create a little circle, and then use those to kind of go out towards the center. And this is just a sketch, so I'm not worried too much about getting this too exact. And then the rings on the outside have the little buds, so I'm gonna go ahead and add those in some longer half circles. And it looks like there's a couple rows of those, so and add a few more in. Not being real exact, this is just a quick rough sketch. Drawing some lines to help guide me as far as where the buds are. Draw those in a little bit more detail when I add in the final line work. And then, so the stem's going up to the center here, so you can you know that the, you're gonna want the stem to kind of come from here, even though the petals are here and you can't really see. It's good to draw that in. It will look a little strange if you have it in the wrong spot. But again, it's just a sketch, a quick study of this plan. So it's okay if you don't get that right. And I'm going to add in the petals or the ray florets. And I'm not going to be too exact. And I'm gonna follow this kind of rough line I already have here to help me with sizing. If I miss a couple or make them too big or too little, that's okay. I'm just gonna add them in. And what I'm doing is I'm keeping my eye kind of in one spot and you can use your finger to do this too and just kind of go along you want to keep your head pretty still while you're doing this so that it doesn't change position there's a group right here so I'm going to draw those in just draw some lines end up adding a few extra petals is totally fine. Just a quick sketch, just like, I don't know how accurate I was with that, well, not accurate at all. I'm trying to keep them about the same length, although these are gonna be a little, look a little shorter from my view here, and these are gonna look a little longer. I got a little lost, so I'm just finding my way back. 
visually. Again, you can use your finger to help you. These are a lot of little petals. It's easy to get lost. Or you could just go around and just create a bunch of petals and not worry too much about it. That's totally fine too. And there are a couple rows of petals here. I keep losing my place, but that's okay. Just a sketch. As long as I get the general idea of this plant on the page, that's what I'm looking for. Taking some time to observe it, get to know it a little bit better by drawing it and painting it. Some of these are a little bit longer here. This curves up so they appear a little shorter, at least from my view. And I think overall that is about right. Maybe this is not quite as big, so I'm going to make it smaller. I'm just using these darker marks to draw in leaves and I'm using this tracing that I did as a base. And again, drawing these things in, don't overcomplicate it, think too much about the shape. This one shape here that's kind of triangular. And then there's another shape here. If you break them up into little simple shapes, it's not as overwhelming. It should be relaxing and having fun, not worrying too much. Just drawing it in. And feel free to make whatever marks you need to, to help guide you. And don't erase too much because it can ruin the paper. This kind of eraser will rough up the paper and make it so that the watercolor won't behave the way it should. So be very careful about that. Again, I'm not being exact about this at all, just adding some marks in the basic area, same general spaces to give myself an idea of where things belong. And I think that looks pretty good. So I'm going to add in, just for consistency, this name Seaside Daisy. And that's the common name. And I'm also gonna write in the scientific name as well. And if I wanted to, I could lighten some of these marks up with a kneaded eraser, but I'm just gonna leave them all there. Stylistic choice of mine. And now I'm gonna move on to adding some paint. So I have my paints that I used for my step-by-step -step lesson already mixed just for convenience. I think it's great to be able to move quickly um, when you're sketching. And I have my colors here as well that I used in my step-by-step -step, just in case I need to revive any or remix any or mix a new color. And I'm just going to go ahead and revive these paints with a little bit of water. 
I'm not gonna add any more paint to them unless I feel like they need to be a little bit more vibrant. So just like with our step-by-step, -step, I'm gonna add this yellow color. And it was really wet and light in our palette, so a lot of water added to it, less pigment to it. And dab it off on my towel so it's not too wet when we add it to our paper, just a lot of water in the palette. Still gonna make it appear light on our paper itself. I'm just gonna add it to the center of the flower. And the stem, now if I get outside of the lines like I just did there, that's totally fine. Adding it to the bud and all these leaves. Then I'm going to clean off the brush. I'm going to pick up this really light wet color. So it already has a small pigment, amount of pigment to it to water in our palette. So there's only a little bit of pigment right here. And we're adding water to it to revive it and testing it out looks good. Dab it off on my towel and I'm going to add it to these petal right here. Again, not being exact, this is very, very approximate quick sketch. Just a representation of the plant, so just adding it in. And while it's still wet, you can go over and add it and move that paint around to any areas you miss. And I'm just adding this in like I would with a marker, just in one single layer. And the difference is you can move the paint around where you can't move the marker color around. And you need to pick up the color whenever you need some more. If it gets a little too light, it starts running out from your paintbrush. I'm going to dab that off onto my towel. And since we're not adding a lot of water to the paper itself, it dries really fast. You can test that by just kind of dabbing your finger over it. And it feels pretty dry. So I'm going to go ahead and pick up this green color. And it seems a lot of it has migrated to the side. I'm going to pick up a little bit of it and just mix it in a new spot. So I want to use a color that's going to be lighter, so it has more water added to it in our palette. Looks pretty good. And I'm going to add that to the disc floret buds, which are the majority of the flower head center there. Pick up some more, dab it off on my towel, and I'm going to also add it to all the areas that I added the yellow. So the stem, the leaves. And I'm going to pick more up whenever it starts to run low, dab it off on my towel, and then continue. I don't want to have too much water on my brush when I'm painting. I might need to mix a little bit more because I'm starting to run out. Dab it on my towel, make sure it's still really light. Looks good. And just be careful not to run your hand over the paint while it's wet. And if you do, that's fine. Might just add to a little bit of style to your painting. Make it imperfectly perfect. And then I'm going to, these are pretty dry. And I'm going to pick up a little bit of this color here. Test it out, looks good. And I'm just going to go ahead and add it to the florets here. Preserve some of that color. Looks a little bit wet still. So you can see if you put the paint down while it's still wet, it'll bleed and kind of 
uh, blend in with that green color. So you can see that happening right there. And you won't be able to get it exactly where you want it. So I probably will want to wait just a little bit longer before I add that in. But I'm also going to just leave this the way it is because I think it looks looks kind of fun. So now this is dry and you can test that by just dabbing your finger over it. And pick up a little bit more of that paint again. Dab it off onto my towel. It's not quite right. Looks pretty good. And then I'm going to go ahead and add that just kind of sparingly throughout. It's kind of a little bit of a dabbing motion to add that in. Cleaning off my brush, I'm going to add some green. I'm adding kind of um, medium green here, so not too dark, not too light. And I'm going to add it to this area here where it looks really dark, kind of here from my perspective. It might be a little bit different from your view. And then I'm going to add it to the stem as well. I'll look at my plant and try to figure out where that green color might be. There's a lot of lighter green in the center. Maybe I'll just add the darker green on the outside to make it look lighter in the center. in. And again, I'm not being exact. I'm just putting it in. I don't worry too much if I get it outside of the lines. Cleaning off my brush. Picking up some of the medium colored lavender and I added a little bit more pigment to it. Testing that out, it looks about right. Maybe a little more water, making it a little lighter, maybe it was a little too dark. There we go. Dab it off onto my towel after picking up some more. And then I'm just gonna look at my flower and start adding it in to these florets. and a lot of this darker purple color that I'm seeing in my view here with the lighting that I have. There are some areas that stay a little lighter, so I'll avoid adding the paint there, but for the most part, it's mostly this darker purple lavender color. And I was not exact about the placement, just kind of approximate and leaving a little bit lighter. And there are some areas that are a little bit darker than even this, so I might even add a little bit of a darker color. Uh, the flowers vary, and this flower just has a little bit darker than our step-by-step -step flower. And I'm gonna go ahead, and this is dry. I'm going to add a little bit of this color, this really dark purple, here to the bud. I'm going to add a little bit too much. Just dab it off on my towel. There we go. Clean off my brush. And I'm going to add this darker green stem and the leaves 
and I'm going to add it, leaving a lot of the stem, the slighter green color, especially the center mid vein of the leaves. Double checking that it's dry. And it doesn't need to be exact. I'm just adding basic area that I see it on my flower. paintbrush is releasing a lot of water as I paint. And I'm okay with these kind of blending together so I'm not letting it dry. And the very center of that flower is super dark looking to me, so I'm going to take a tiny bit of that dark, dark color. I'm just going to add it right there. Maybe spread it out a little bit. These petals should be dry, so I'm going to add, after cleaning off my brush, I think I got a little bit of green there, pick up a little bit of that super dark purple, test it out. It might be a little too dark, so I think I'm just going to add a little bit, I think I'm just going to add a little bit of that darker color there to our drier color and just make it a little bit deeper and darker. A little bit up and then just add a little bit of this to the petals kind of the tips and then a few lines here and there that way it pops off the page a little bit more a little bit more of a color variation and just add those in looking at my flower and not being exact at all. This is pretty dry in the center except for that tiny bit of green which is fine. I'm going to add, pick up a little bit of this green color and I think this is all kind of a deeper green so I'm just going to add a little bit more there. I'm not worried about it blending with the center too much. A little tiny bit of this purplish color right here on the bud. So it's good to just kind of add whatever you're observing when you're sketching and not be too exact or worry too much about exact placement. And I think I like the way this looks. I like the colors and I think I'm going to leave it just like this. I'm going to let it dry and then add some ink lines. So next I'm going to add ink lines. I'm going to start with the 005 Micron. This is the smallest tip. Most forgiving if I end up drawing some lines that I don't want to have there. I can change them with some thicker lines later. and. I'm just going to start anywhere I want, drawing in these lines, kind of redrawing my sketch and redefining based on where my paint ended up. And I can choose to leave 
paint inside or outside of the line. So here the paint went outside and I can draw a new petal line there, make the petals a little longer, or I can just leave the paint on the outside. So I'm just gonna go throughout and redraw those lines. I'm also going to redraw the common name and scientific name, and I'm gonna maybe make it a little neater this time. So I'm changing those lines a little bit. little bit neater. Next, I'm gonna use the O1 micron. It's a little bit thicker of a micron to thicken some of the lines, including the scientific name. Let's go throughout and add anything that I think needs to be a little thicker. And you wanna use it just wherever you think the lines are just a little bit harder or darker. Um, so harder edges are lines that Kind of like on the stems where the lines are pretty hard or sometimes in the shadow area definitely have a harder line there um, around these leaves are very hard and then i think just some areas in the petals have some spots that need to be a little bit darker um, so wherever the light's really hitting in my view it's hitting right here so we don't really have a lot of the lines except for right here where there's a shadow So just go throughout and add those lines where you see them. Make sure you don't add them everywhere. You want the lines to be varied to help with making this really pop off the page. If all the lines are the same, it's like if you have the same color, it makes it look really flat. If you add some line variation, uh, and where you don't put the line the same thickness throughout the whole thing, it's going to make it so it pops off the page a little bit better. Even though we're not using a lot of layers of paint and drawing a lot of details in. Lastly, I'm going to add the 08 micron lines. These are the thickest micron. I'm going to use this to thicken the common name to help it really stand out from everything else. You want to be careful not to run your fingers or your hand over anything you've drawn immediately with this pen because it does tend to smudge while it's wet. So you want to make sure it's dry before your hand goes over it or your fingers go over it. And I'm not gonna use it very much. This is pretty good the way it is. There aren't any super hard areas or lines. This edge right here to me has a little bit of dark area in there. But for the most part, I'm going to use it to separate, make a little thicker line here to separate this from the leaf, make it stand out a little bit more, maybe this stem. Make some of these leaves and stems stand out from each other. And then that's probably about it. Just a few lines throughout. And that helps give it a little bit more three-dimensional look so you can see the line variation makes it pop off the page a little bit more. separate 
one part from the other, making it look more three-dimensional as well. And that looks good to me. You can add more paint after you've added the ink, just let it dry between layers. And you can add more ink afterwards as well. Just make sure you don't work on it too much. This is just a sketch. It's meant to be a relaxing, painting, observing this plant in nature. Make sure you use this white space for any kind of observations, thoughts, or feelings you would have while you were creating this painting. So anything you think that maybe you would have done differently, any observations you made while you're painting it, what you noticed, maybe you want to draw on the aphid that I was on the paper initially, or talk about how aphids live or found on this plant. Um, any questions you might have, what you might have learned, uh, why the plant is growing where it's growing, maybe the weather, any kind of observations you're making, any thoughts or feelings. This white space is your journal, so make sure to make it your own. Great job observing your world and keep practicing. Thank you for joining me. Make sure to click the like button, subscribe to this YouTube channel, shop for future crates at naturesketchcrate.com and share your art using the hashtag naturecreateart. If you have any questions or like to see a plant or animal featured in a future lesson, please let me know in the comments below.